في علمي then how can I not be a total ignoramus in my state of ignorance فكيف لا أكون جهولا في جهل Allah is all knowing we know not we think we know and because we think we know look at the mess that we've made of this earth look at the mess we've made of our social structure look at the mess we've made of our societies all over the world we think we know if we know so much why are we in the state that we're in if we know so much why are we in the state that we're in we have to humble ourselves and we have to acknowledge our servitude to our Lord. We become so arrogant. We become so arrogant. Allah Ta'ala mentions the human. أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّهُ كَانُ مُطْفَةً فَإِذَا هُوَ He's the human he, he, he comes out as a, a drop of sperm. فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَا خَلْقًا So the human, do you not see the human? Who began his origin was a drop of sperm that channel that traveled the same path as the urine of the human being. That's where the human being comes for, from. And then he becomes someone who raises up and disputes and argues with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sets forth parables to Allah ta'ala and he forgets his lowly origin. He forgets where he came from. He forgets that were not for the mercy that Allah Ta'ala put in the heart of his mother and the hearts of his parents. He or she would not have seen the light of day. And if they saw the light of day, they wouldn't have lasted a single day. But Allah Ta'ala put mercy in the hearts of their parents. And so they fed them and they cleaned their filth away from them. And they exposed them to that which would bring knowledge and information to them when they knew nothing. And were it not for the fact that Allah Ta'ala exposed them to that which teaches them, they would still know nothing. If it were not for the mercy of Allah, we could be like the wolf boy. The boy they found was raised by wolves. He was walking on all fours. He was howling like a wolf. And even when they brought him into contact with human beings at the age of nine or ten, they could not teach him a single word of human speech. Because the imprint had been already laid. But when we're impressionable, and we're at our most vulnerable, and we're at our weakest, it is then that Allah Ta'ala manifests his mercy, the epitome of His mercy. And hence, وَعِبَادُ Rahman. When we're at our weakest, that's where the Rahmah of Allah manifests itself to the fullest. But we forget. We are servants of Allah. We're not servants of our nafs. We're not like the ones who set forth parables before Allah. And then forget where we came from. And anyone from the human family who forgets where they come from, forgets where they're going. And these, these few verses mention both, or imply both. We're servants of Allah, not servants of ourselves. Our modern and our postmodern condition conspires to make us servants of ourselves, to make us worshippers of ourselves. 
Have you seen the one, not seen the one who's taken at his, his God? The very whims of his soul. The century of the self. People become so arrogant. Muslims become so arrogant. They say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And then the first thing out of their mouth, I don't think this is part of Islam. We hear it every day. I don't think I have to do this. I don't think Allah made this haram. I don't think that this, because it goes against what I think is right. Who are you? Who am I? Who are any of us? Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't think it's right. I don't think this is part of Islam. I don't think this is, Allah ta'ala really meant this to be haram. Or why can't this be halal? I'm not comfortable with this part of Islam. Then you're in the wrong religion. Because this religion, Allah didn't send it to make us comfortable. Allah sent it to test us and to try us. To see if we are sincere in our claim that we love Allah and our claim that we want Jannah. The people think they'll be left alone merely saying we believe and not be tested. أحسبتم من تدخل الجنة تدخل الجنة ولما يتكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم Do you think you'll be you enter paradise and when there is not yet come to you the trials that afflicted those who preceded you تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا Blessed is the one in whose hand is the dominion of all things and he over all things has power the one who created death and life to test you with which of you are best indeed. Surely we're going to test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and fruits and lives and fruits give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. That doesn't sound like a religion that's supposed to make us comfortable. We become comfortable when we acknowledge our servitude. People who aren't comfortable with Islam are people who are uncomfortable being a servant of Allah. That's who's uncomfortable with Islam. If you're comfortable with your servitude, you're comfortable with this man. The trials and tests come, say, Alhamdulillah, it's just another day in the dunya. MashaAllah, let me roll up my sleeves and get ready for this one. Wa ibadu Rahman. So we are the servant. We are weak. We're helpless without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are lost without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And despite his power, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Qahar, Al Muntaqim, he is the compeller, he is the forceful. Al Aziz, he is the mighty. Al Azim, he is the awesome. Al Muntaqim, he is the avenger. But despite all of that, he manifests himself to us if we accept our servitude as the merciful. And then he describes these servants. They're the ones who walk humbly on the earth. Hawnan ma'anahu as sakina, sakinatan wa tawadu'an. With tranquility and humility. They walk with tranquility and they walk with humility. Because they understand that this is the way of the people who want paradise. 
تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا ولا عقبة للمتقين This is the home of the hereafter, paradise which we have made for those who don't desire to exalt themselves in the earth nor to work corruption therein and the end will be for the righteous for the God conscious so those who are the people of paradise they walk with humility and tranquility on the earth they don't walk with arrogance they don't walk destructively they don't walk in a way that imposes themselves on their environment. They walk with humility. This is the first description Allah Ta'ala gives. وَإِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when they are addressed by the ignorant people, when they are addressed by those who out of their ignorance want to provoke them, when they're addressed by those who out of their ignorance might unintentionally aggravate them, who are out of their ignorance, they might intentionally provoke them. قَالُوا سَلَامًا They say, peace. They don't engage them. They don't go down to their level. They don't pretend they're better than them. They just say, peace. And the ulama say, هَذَا Tahiyatu Tawdi' wa la tahiyatu wa la hada hada tasneem hada tasneemu Tawdi' wa la tasneemu tahiyah that this is the peace of departing and not the peace of greeting and engagement in other words they say I'm out wida khatabuhum al-jahiluna qalu salama when the ignorant address them, they say, I'm out of here. Hada Tasleem, Salam, Tawdi'ah. Wadda'uhum. I'm out. I'll see you later. Peace. Allah be with you. I'm out. They don't respond in kind. They don't uh, return a provocation with an equal provocation. They just say, Salam. وَإِذَا قَاتَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Because I want peace. I'm a Muslim. I don't want conflict. I want peace. And so, if you want conflict, it takes two to tangle. I'm leaving you alone to try to figure out how to engage yourself. قَالُوا سَلَامًا this is the foundation of their dealing with their environment and dealing with other human beings. They walk with tranquility and humility on the earth. These are the servants of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, Allahumma sallu rasulillah, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ هَلْ أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ Shall I inform you of the people of paradise? قَالَ قُلُّ ضَعِيثًا مُتَضَعِيثًا لَا أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا أَبَرَّ He said, shall I inform you of the people of paradise? He said, every weak person who's looked upon as being weak, if he were to ask anything from Allah, Allah would give it to him. In other words, he's mighty with Allah. And it's from the mercy of Allah that Allah put humility in his heart. Because were he to ask anything from Allah, Allah would give it to him. There are people whose dua could bring a nation to its knees. There are people on this earth whose prayer could bring a nation to its knees. But it's from Allah's mercy that they don't. And this is a prophetic maqam. This is a prophetic station. Whenever they came to the Prophet wasallam and said, invoke the curse of Allah on these people. As they did at Uhud. And what did the Prophet say? I was sent as a mercy, not as one to curse. 
إنما بعثت رحمة وما بعثت لعانا. I was sent as a mercy not to curse people. I was sent as a mercy not to curse people. At the Taif, the angels came. Just give us the order, we will crush them between the mountains. So leave them. That was in his maqam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was resting in the shade of the Kaaba, and some of his companions came to him, and they were suffering from the persecution of the Quraysh, and they called him to invoke Allah's wrath. He just continued to chill out in the shade of the Kaaba. And what did he say to them? The people who preceded you, one of them was brought, a saw was placed in the middle of his head and he was cut in half. And another one, the bone, a metal rake was brought and the flesh was raked off of his bones. And they never despaired of Allah's mercy, but your people too much in a hurry. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ too much in a hurry. Just relax. Everything's going to be all right. We don't need all this desperation we see in this ummah. People despairing and out of their desperation engaging in heinous crimes, murdering innocent people, murdering their fellow Muslims, looking for any excuse to murder somebody because they bought into a, a despicable ideology of killing and bloodshed, divorced from any means. One of them's written a book, some of you are familiar with, Al Faridatul Ghaila, the missing pillar, meaning the sixth pillar. We were taught five pillars by our Prophet. Who amongst human beings can come and say there's a sixth pillar, and that sixth pillar is jihad? And so you have to fight just like you have to pray and fast and give zakat. You have to fight. And if there's no one to fight, then invent somebody to fight. If there's no kuffar to fight, then invent a reason to fight your fellow Muslims. If there's no able-bodied people to fight, go and kill and fight women and children. That's what's happening all over this ummah, out of desperation. It's only a disbelieving people who despair of Allah's mercy. The Prophet wasn't desperate. They came to him. He just kept resting in the shade of the Kaaba. You're too much in a hurry. Allah's got this. Right? We say, when someone's all shaken up, listen, man, I got this. No, no, you sure, man? He's got me. I got it. Just relax. I got this. Right? You say, you need to just relax, go home, take a shower. But man, these dudes, they're big, man, they got guns. Listen, I got it. Well, Allah has it. So just relax, chill out, enjoy life, work hard. Work hard, but don't despair. There's no need for desperation. Allah has it. Allah has it. So we just make sure we're good servants of Allah. Make sure we're servants of the merciful. Because Allah's mercy isn't going anywhere. It's, a, it's an attribute of Allah, meaning it's pre-existing. And it's eternal. It's not going, Allah's mercy isn't going anywhere. Allah has it. Chill out and relax. This is what we're supposed to be doing. That's how we deal with people. And how do we deal with our Lord? Those who spend the night with their Lord. So they're in the confines of their house at night. لِرَبِّهِمْ With their Lord, how? سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Prostrating and standing in prayer. Prostrating and standing in prayer. 
That's how they spend their nights with their Lord. And this gives them the strength to make it through the day. This gives them the strength and the the familiarizing, this familiarizes them with Allah Ta'ala and they know that their Lord has it. Where did they become familiar with their Lord at night? And because they know Allah at night, they know how to deal with people during the day. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّ مَصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ And despite, so look, this is, this is the third description Allah Ta'ala gives. So they do what they have to do with the people. يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَا They're not arrogant, they're not destructive, they're not boastful. وَإِذَا خَاتَمُهُمْ خَاتَمُهُمْ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا They don't engage with ignorant people. They don't respond to provocations. They fulfill the rights Allah has described them as fulfilling. And they fulfill the rights of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا They spend their nights in prayer. Not all of it necessarily. Some of it. A good portion of it. Despite that, they take nothing for granted. That doesn't make them arrogant. It's only arrogant. It only increases their humility. So despite doing what Allah asked them to do in their dealings with people, despite doing what Allah Ta'ala asked them to do in their dealings with Allah Ta'ala, they don't take anything for granted. They don't arrogate, arrogate themselves. And so they humble themselves and they pray and they don't take paradise for granted. So they say, our Lord ward off from us the punishment of hell. Because the punishment of hell is terrible. It's enduring. It doesn't slacken up. There's no holiday in hell. There's no break. It goes on and on and on. There's no getting used to it. There's no conclusion. As Allah tells us in the Quran, once their skin burns through, they say, okay, it's bad. I'm all burned up, but that's it. Maybe I'll cool off now. No, they're given a new skin. And that one's burned through. And then a new one. And then a new one. And then a new one. So the punishment is always fresh. We don't want that fate. But look at the humility. They still, they pray, they pray, they pray to a loss. Ward off from us the punishment of hell. Verily, the punishment of hell is terrible and it's enduring. <laughs> what a wretched place to, to settle into. What a wretched place to dwell in. So, brothers and sisters, take advantage of the time you have. Worship your Lord with sincerity. Worship your Lord with sincerity. Don't spend, waste your time that you can be worshiping Allah, that you can be serving your fellow humans, serving your fellow creatures on this earth, responding to ignorance, getting wrapped up and caught up in all sorts of non-trivial nonsense, spending hours going back and forth over petty, meaningless insults. We don't have time for that, brothers and sisters. Our time here is short. Our time here is short. It passes quickly. You look at these children, everyone remembers when that was them. It seemed like yesterday. It seemed like yesterday. Now there's gray in the beard. There are pains and aches in the joints. There's sluggishness in the step. And then before you know it, it's over. 
May Allah give us wisdom. May Allah ta'ala give us sincerity. May Allah ta'ala give us seriousness about our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be amongst those who engage with our Lord. And engaging with our Lord come to know our Lord. And in knowing our Lord, we know that Allah has it. And we can relax and get on with our work. أقول قول هذا وصوت الله لي ولكم وإنسان المؤمنين يقول In saying that we have to work and we have to be conscious of our destination and we have to pray to Allah to ward off the punishment of hell from us. It doesn't mean we don't work in this world, we work in this world. It doesn't mean we de deny or neglect the plight of the poor and the weak. Our Prophet ﷺ mentioned as related by Abid Darda. رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ابغوني بالدعفاء فإنما تنصرون وترزقون بدعفائكم He said صلى الله عليه وسلم seek me out amongst the poor and the downtrodden ابغوني بدعفائكم بالدعفاء Seek me out amongst the poor and the downtrodden, for because you're given your given your divine aid and you're given your sustenance because of the way you treat and respond to the needs of the poor and the oppressed and the downtrodden. In the matun saruna wa turzakuna bidu'afaikum, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But in working and striving and trying to make a difference in the world, we don't do it from a position of despair. We don't do it from a position of desperation. We do it with a, an open heart, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're doing it understanding sometimes our efforts will lead to a positive outcome, sometimes they won't. That's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we leave to Allah that which is for Allah. We leave to Allah that which is for Allah. The outcome is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We work and we depute the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if His in His mercy He blesses us with something pleasing to us, we say Alhamdulillah. And if in His wisdom He blesses us, blesses us with an outcome that we didn't anticipate or doesn't immediately please us, we say, Alhamdulillah. Because our job is to work, and the outcome is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the deceptions of the modern age is this whole idea of positivism. That everything is inevitably progressing. No, there, there's pro progress and there's setbacks. There was progress at better for the Ummah. There was a setback at Uhud. There was a setback at Hunayn in the beginning. There was progress in the end. This is, this is the way history ebbs and flows, as Allah Ta'ala reminds us. So through it all, we just work, trust in Allah, try to be sincere in our worship, and then depute the outcome to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala knowing History is in good hands. History is in good hands. And it's not in the hands of market forces. It's not in the hands of economic forces. As Marx said, right, the driving force of history, the dialectic, the material dialectic. The theses, antithesis, synthesis, and it moves forward. 
the slaves and the owners of slavery, the lords and the serfs, the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, and it moves forward. Well, we've seen how that story ended. It didn't lead to what Marx said it would lead to, because Karl Marx, Karl Popper, or Karl the ice cream man, doesn't have the power to bring about anything in this world. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ You can only desire something if it's consistent with what Allah has desired. أَنْ أُرِيبُ وَأَنْ تَتُوِيبُ وَاللَّهُ فَعَلُوا لِمَا يُوِيبُ I want something and you want something but Allah does what He wants. May Allah give us tawfiq. اللهم وفيل المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزد قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت المحام ربنا فرغ علينا الصبر والثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا فرغ علينا الصبر والثبت أقدامنا وتوثنا مسلمين وعف عنا وفي لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إن نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ومن العجز والكسل ومن الجبن والبخل ومن غلطة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنة ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأقصارنا وقوتنا مما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصعبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مغلظ علمنا ولا تصدق علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعف عنا وفي لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أكم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله